So welcome to uh, the UNCG Online Learning uh, and Innovation Webinar Series. I'm Sam Harlow. I'm the Online Learning Librarian. Um, I also work with Kinesiology, Public Health Education, and Community and Therapeutic Rec uh, for UNCG Libraries. Um, this is, uh, we've been doing actually this now for a while. I think we're in our second year of the webinar series. Uh, so welcome if you haven't attended before. In this series, different UNCG instructional technology consultants, ITS staff, and faculty cover topics on online learning pedagogies, UNCG instructional technology tools such as Canvas, Google, Box, et cetera, and other things. Excuse me. These 30 minute webinars are recorded in WebEx meetings where we are now and placed on this web page in YouTube and closed captioned um, after the fact. So, um, we also give the ITC or ITS or faculty member um, the video file if they want to put it somewhere as they see fit as well. I'm going to cover a couple of quick logistical things about the webinar before we get started. Please mute your audio during the presentation by clicking the audio icon next to your name to turn it red, but feel free to turn your audio back on by clicking the audio icon again at the end of the webinar to participate in a conversation with the presenter. If you do not have a microphone, you are also welcome to participate and ask questions in chat. If you have questions throughout the webinar, please put them in the chat and I will track the questions while uh, April presents the materials. If you have any technical issues during this webinar, feel free to email me. I leave my email open in case there's um, issues. Um, I realize I've been sending this all to Monty and uh, we'll go from there. So are there any questions before I introduce um, our presenter today? So um, today, we, this session is hosted by April Black and ITC for the Bryan School, and uh, she's going to talk about Canvas Studio and embedding quizzes and videos. So April, I'm going to hand it over to you. And hey, Sharon, um, hey. we're just getting started, and I'm going to, I'm, yep, I hear you fine. We're going to, I'm going to mute you during the presentation, but I'll unmute you at the end if you have any questions. So do I? So I don't do anything. I don't. Nope, have to... you're good. <laughs> okay. Okay, welcome everybody. I'm glad you're here. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Today we're going to talk a little bit about using Studio inside your Canvas course. And Studio allows you to do a lot of things with video. Um, if you haven't investigated um, Studio at all, I'll just give you a really brief um, overview of why Studio is an awesome tool, and then I will talk about its awesomeness with embedded quizzes. Um, so first I'm going to tell you um, a little bit about Studio. Studio is a tool that allows you to embed video in your courses. It doesn't have to be videos that you create, but you can create your own videos with um, Studio. You can also do screencasting and embed those videos in your course, but you can also um, pull in YouTube videos or videos that you've created with some other piece of software into your Canvas course. Now what Studio allows you to do with that video, there are multiple things, but one is you can add closed captioning if you need to caption your video, but it gives you a way of assessing and engaging your students. Now the assessment piece is if you embed a quiz, you can actually see how much time your students spent watching your video content, and let's face it, it takes a lot of time to create video content, so we want our students to watch it. Um, by creating embedded quizzes, you have a way of assessing how much time was spent on the content and how well the content is structured and how well your students are actually engaging with the content and how well they're understanding the content. So it gives you a, a nice assessment, not just of your students, but also of the work that you've done. For instance, if you have a question that you've asked about a piece of content that you feel was well structured, and yet 70% of the students get the question wrong about that content, it's usually one of two things. One, you've asked a poorly worded question or a question that's not um, easily understood by your students, or the content perhaps might need to be reorganized in a better way to meet what you try to present as the main flow of the content through your question. And then the analysis piece is what I was saying was, you can analyze how much time the student spends on that. Um, but it's most important is Studio is a way of actively engaging your student in the content that you create. And since you spend time creating content, you do want your students to engage with it. And so Studio gives you um, a really cool way to do that, either through the discussion component where students can 
um, to add a comment to your video directly on the timeline or post a question on your video on the timeline or through the quizzing tool. The quizzing tool is what we're going to focus on today um, and we'll look at that a little further as we move down through this presentation. Um, so here's a quick look at Studio. Um, as I said, it's a collaborative video tool that allows you to manage and deliver your video content in a way that you can actually determine how much time your students are spending on the content you create. And that's really important because creating videos is very time consuming, as you probably already know. And we do want to know that our students are actually interacting with that content. So Studio allows you that through this quizzing feature. It also is a, a great way for students to um, develop their metacognitive t skills. They are able to, you know, as they watch a video and they answer a question, if they get it right, they obviously are understanding the content. But if they get it wrong, they, they can realize, oh, I didn't re wasn't paying enough attention or I didn't understand that piece of content. I, I should go back and rewatch that footage and then try to answer this question again. So it gives students a way to strengthen their metacognitive reflection um, as well as for them to improve their, um, their ability to focus on your video content. Because a lot of times, you know, they're multitasking, they're doing five or six things, and they think that they're understanding and paying attention. But if, when you stop and you read 10 texts while you're watching the video, your full attention is not on the video. Um, and when they go to answer the question, they realize, oh, I thought I was paying attention, but I, I really missed that question. I don't even remember watching anything about this topic. So it kind of gives them a little focal guide. So it increases engagement. It, it gives you a way to manage your content. And I say that because when you use Studio, it creates what I'm going to call a library. They call it My Upload. And that organizes all of your content. When you go into a course and you look at Studio, you'll get a list of all the courses that you have in that course. But if you go to My Uploads through your navigation menu into Studio, you'll have all your videos for, that you've created across all your courses. So the nice thing about that is if you created a course in, let's say, Business 216, and you want to use that cor course in Marketing 315, you can do that, and you, all you have to do is pull that video directly from your My Uploads and put it in your course. So it's really a nice way to have access to all your videos across all of your content. And then I've already mentioned analytics and assessments. So it's a, a great tool for increasing your analytic and assessment abilities. Hey, April. Yes? Um, there was a quick question, and I think you're going to get into this, but uh, Monty asked, can they see immediate results of the question? Yes, they can. And when you create these quizzes, that's a good question, Monty. When you create um, your your question and you embed it and they start watching the video, I always hide the question markers. Um, it, you have to select that, and I'm going to show you how to do that. But the reason that's important is if you don't hide the markers, you'll have students who are too lazy to watch the video or don't aren't interested in watching the video, and they just click on the marker for each question, answer the questions, and then go to the very end and submit. So the whole point of these embedded quizzes is, is to engage the students in your content that you've created that you want them to watch or in the YouTube video that you've deemed worthy to include in your course and is worth the students' time to watch. So if you hide the markers, then the students have to start at the beginning and watch the entire video so that they make sure they answer all the questions before they can click the submit button. Um, when they miss a question, it will tell them they've missed the question. And one of the options is, can I go back and review the question? And if they say yes, they can go back and review the content, and then they can answer the question again. This is like a low stakes grade for students. And their goal is for all your students to get 100 um, on these quizzes because they're covering the content that you've developed for them. And so if they're watching it, they should get 100, right? So. It's okay if they go back and re-answer it because it's about the learning, okay? So it should be a low stakes, maybe even you might make it all of your quizzes if you do one every single week for your content every single week across 16 weeks. Maybe it's 10% of their total grade and they get a quiz every week. But it's not like a test, it's a quiz. So remember the emphasis is low stakes and it should be um, easy for students to, um, if they actually watch the content, you want them to, to be successful. So 
we're going to um, move forward, but there's two things I wanted to say. One is that if you're creating a quiz in your studio, um, in your, inside your course, the, it's very important to remember that in order to actually add the quiz to the video, you have to get to that quiz through the My Uploads menu, which is accessed not directly in your course, um, in your rich content editor, but in the navigation panel. So we're going to take a look at that now. I'm going to move forward so you can see that, because that's the meat of this whole thing. So I'm going to actually um, leave this presentation, this PowerPoint slide, and I'm going to take you into a real course, when I say real course, a faculty resources page. So let me go into that faculty resources page. What's going on? Uh-oh. Sorry about that. Let's see if I can fix this. My PowerPoint wants to crash. We're going to go backwards one screen. Let me go back and represent. I don't know what happened here in this slide. But, you know, with technology, you just never, ever know. So let's try it one more time. Here we go. So now I'm in what we call the Brian Faculty um, Resources page. And I'm going to go view all pages. And in these pages, I obviously have embedded videos. Um, but I'm going to go to what I call the studio menu for all of my courses. Now, what it first pulls up, because I'm in this Bryan School Faculty Resources course, we're going to call it a course, I'm going to have all the videos I've created for this course. But if I go to these three lines, there is a new menu called My Uploads. And remember, I said that if you go to My Uploads, this is where I have all my videos from all my courses. If I scroll down, I see lots and lots of videos, and I've been doing these for a long time. I have to click Load More to see them all, and I would have to click Load More a second time to get them all. I have a ton of videos, so we're not going to look at them all. I'm just going to pick one. But remember that if to add a quiz, you have to be in this My Uploads menu. That's important. To embed a quiz in a video, you need to be in this menu. It doesn't mean that you have to have a video, ar video already created, you can add a video by clicking the Add button, or you can record a new video by clicking the Record button, and, but then you'll have to add the quiz to it. So whenever you see this little airplane, you see the airplane in the top left on Dr. Brown's Syllabus Review, that means it has an embedded quiz already in it. Now I could add a new quiz to this if I chose this by clicking on these three dots. And I have some choices. Now notice that because this one already has quizzes, I have an arrow there. I can edit the Dr. Brown syllabus quiz, or I can add a new quiz. I'm not going to do that because that already has a quiz. But you can have multiple quizzes for the same video. Why is that important? Well, if you wanted to use this, same, this video for, for, say, Business 216, and I also wanted to use it for ISM 782, Obviously, 216 is a lower level course than an ISM 782, so I might want to ask more complex questions in the higher level course. So I want to have two quizzes for the same video, and the higher level course would have more complex quizzes. So I could put two quizzes in there, and then when I embed it in the course, I pick the quiz that I want to be applied for that video, and that would be a list of those videos. So I'm going to scroll down here, and I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to pick a video. I'm going to try this UNCG policies video because um, it's kind of short. And let's see, it's four minutes and 44 seconds. Okay, I'm going to choose this video. Um, let me go back to my uploads. 444 should work just fine. I just didn't want something too long for creating your um, example. So I'm going to go down here and click these three dots. And I have that same menu, except this time I don't have the example of an already pre-created quiz. Let me show you the difference. All I have here is create quiz on this one because there's no airplane on that one. Remember there was an airplane? If I go up here to Dr. Brown's quiz, there's this airplane. So when I click on the three dots, I have quizzes listed. And I can add a quiz or I can edit an already existing quiz. So there's that difference. So I'm going to do that on this one. I'm just going to create a quiz versus add a quiz because there's no quiz there. So that's what you do the first time you create a quiz for a specific video is to create a quiz. So once you click create a quiz, 
you now have this confirm video quiz settings, which I call the information page, which I'm going to put information on this. So I'm going to name this video quiz um, policy for academic. Oops. Uh, I can't type. Policy for, for academic um, procedures. You can call it whatever you want to. And in this description, I'm going to say quiz for BUS 216. So that reminds me that I created this video quiz for 216. I might use a different quiz for a different course. Now, remember I told you about hiding markers, hide question markers on timeline for students? If I don't activate this, then students, as they look at the video, will be able to click on the blue dots that appear on the timeline and answer each question and skip watching the video. So I always activate this and hide the question markers on the timeline for students because I want to force them to watch my video. So that's my practice. You can choose to do something different and have the timeline codes marked if you want to, but I personally spend a lot of time creating my videos and I want them to be watched. So I make them uh, be hidden. So then once you have all that information entered, you click Get Started. And now I'm ready to add a question. Now in um, Studio, you have three kinds of questions, and you'll see that. So I'm going to just drag the play bar, which is down here at the bottom of the video. And I'm going to say I've gotten through the content, and I'm just going to stop here, and I'm going to click Add. So this plus sign adds a question. And I have choices. Multiple choice, true or false, or multiple answer. Well, I'm going to do a multiple choice question first. And uh, the GPA requirement to remain in good standing in the Bryan School is, and then I'm going to put some choices, 2.5, 3.0, I'm going to add another option because I want more options, so I just hit the plus key, 3.5, and then I'm going to add one more option by hitting the plus key again, and this one is going to be 2.0. And then, when if I scroll a little further down here, I can, I have some options. I can vary the points by answer. I'm not going to do that because they either get it right or they get it wrong, but I could, so if they, if they, if they put 2.5, and 2.5 is an acceptable answer. They could get partial credit. If I wanted to give them partial credit, I don't. But if I did, I could. I can shuffle the answers by making them the different choices line up at different times, uh, depending on who the viewer is. Or I could provide feedback. This feedback option might be the one that you might choose to use most often. So for a correct answer, you might say, yes, that's great. And did you know that 2.0 is not your goal. Your goal should be 3.0 or higher, or whatever kind of feedback you want. If you get an incorrect answer, you could say something like, I'm sorry, that's not correct. Perhaps you should go back and re-watch re this section of the video. You can put in whatever kind of feedback you want to, but that's an option. Once you've gotten your question finalized in the format that you want, all you do is click Save, and that question is now added. To add a new question, and see this little question mark? That would show up on the timeline if I hadn't selected hide those markers from students. So now I'm just going to drive my, drag my timeline a little further down, and I'm going to go to this point in the video, and I'm going to hit plus, and I'm going to do a true-false question this time. And my true-false question is, um, there are no pre, oops, April, pre -rex, oh, sorry prereqs for Brian school courses. Hey, um, April, uh, yep. I think you're about to show this, but Monty wants to see how you marked the correct one again. Okay. And, um, Sharon, I'm you right here on this one? So yeah. there are no prereqs right. for Brian school courses. Is that true? No, it's false. So the correct answer is false. So to make it the correct answer, I click false and then save. So you just choose which one. I'll go back and edit that first question so you can see it. So I'm going to go back here to this first question. I'm going to use the pencil, which brings me into edit mode. And now I'm going to go back and edit it. And the correct answer is 2-0. And I had it marked incorrectly, so I'm glad you pointed out. And I, 
So I, I if and if that happens, you may have the wrong answer. You can go back and edit it. So I've edited it so the correct answer is 2.0, and you just simply click in the box, just like in Canvas when you're creating a quiz, quiz question in Canvas, and then click Save. So now that question has been edited. I've got a second question, and if I wanted to put a third question in, I could go down further down the timeline by clicking on the timeline and dragging it, and I want to put it right here. Um, so this time I could do a multiple answer if I wanted to by clicking multiple answer, and then I could add a question stem. Um, the following, oops, golly day, I'm so sorry. Are, the following are Brian School majors, and then I'll type an answer, accounting, finance, uh, econ, oops, add an answer, sorry, economics, and then I'm going to add another answer, um, uh, computer science. So my correct answers are accounting, finance, and economics. I could go scroll down and I could give question feedback the same way, just doing down here. Um, options, if I can give shuffle the choices, I'm not going to shuffle the choices, it doesn't really matter. Question feedback, for correct answer, I could put a response here for an incorrect answer. I might say for if they chose computer science, no, computer science is not a part of the Brian School or whatever feedback I wanted to give. When I'm done, I simply click Save. So now I've saved this and now I have this test. When I'm finished creating a test, I simply click Done at the top of the screen, click Done. Before I do that, are there any questions about creating questions? I think you just answered this. Oh, Bonnie said, how do points transfer to the grade book? That, I haven't shown you that yet, and that is a um, good question. I'm coming to that. So I'm going to click Done with this video. Now, I haven't embedded that in a content page in a rich content editor. I haven't put it in a page. I haven't put it in an announcement. I haven't put it in an assignment. I haven't put it in a quiz. I've done nothing with it. I just created it, and I've added a quiz to it. So now when I go to this academic standing page, you see there's an airplane, right? Can you see the airplane? So now I have an embedded quiz there. Let's say I don't want this to go to my grade book this time because for whatever reason, I just want them to watch the video and take the quiz because I just want to make sure they're watching the video and I want to be able to look at it to see that they watched it. So this time I might put it in a content page. So I'm going to go to Pages. As soon as my computer goes, I'm going to view all pages. And I'm going to add this to um, this art video tutorial page. I don't know what's on here. That's obviously before Studio used to be known as ARC. Uh, now it's known as Studio. They had a name change. I'm going to edit this page. And I'm going to change this to say Studio. Oops, like a type, I'm going to change it to say Studio. And then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to add more content to this. Um, I'll just put in a few lines here and I'm going to put it right up here so you can see the difference. So I'm going to go here and if you have Studio in your in your course more than once, which I do because in this course um, when they first brought out Studio as ARC, I, was, I piloted it and I added it to this course. So I have this more external tools icon. Yours won't look like this. I'll show you what yours will look like in a different class. But I have ARC and Studio. It's exactly the same tool. I could choose either one of them and it would work exactly the same and go to my same library. So I'm going to use Studio and it's going to go to all of my uploads for all of my courses. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to find my um, academic standing video that I just did with the airplane that shows me it has a quiz. I'm going to select this by hovering over it and then I click on select this. So notice that now I have a standard embed which allows you to have comments or display download options. But you also have something called video quiz embed. I want to use the video quiz embed because I want the video. So I'm choosing the video quiz embed option. If I had chosen a video that I had more than one choice for quizzes, remember I told you you could put multiple quizzes in for each video, I would pick the appropriate one for the course. I only have one for this one, so I'm just going to obviously use this one, Policy for Academic Procedures, and then I'm going to say Embed. I'm going to save this so that you can see what it now looks like. 
there's the video. And I'm going to click Save. It's not published, but I'm going to click Save just for the purposes of this demonstration. And if I wanted to take the quiz, I click Get Started. And I believe the very first exam, I'm going to hit Stop here. We don't need to hear all that stuff. And I'm going to scroll forward because I know the video was right at about one minute. So I'm going to click here, and then I'm going to hit Play. So I believe I was right around one minute. Here's the question that's now popped up. As a student, I would go in and I would put in my an answer. The answer is 2.0. It's happened in 2.5, but then I'm like, I'm not really sure. I could click rewatch and answer it again, or I could continue. The correct answer is 2.0, so I'm going to put the correct answer in, and then I'm going to click continue. It proceeds through the video until I answer all the questions, and the next one was maybe at two minutes somewhere. But anyway, that's how the students would see it. And they have to get all the way to the very end, watch at the very end until I get it to the submit button. So I'm going to hit play from here. And when I'm at the end of the movie, I'll have resume the quiz because there are a few more questions I didn't answer. I can go back and resume the quiz, um, or I could submit an incomplete quiz. So I have choices. Um, most students would choose resubmit quiz and then go back and rewatch it. Now, this quiz is simply for metacognition for the students. You can see, if I had submitted my quiz, I'll go ahead and say submit incomplete quiz here for just giggles and grins. As an instructor, in fact, students won't see this quiz results, but as the instructor, when you click on quiz results, you have an item analysis, which is nothing there because I only answered one question, and there, it will come, it's just not ready yet. And student results. It will show that one student completed it. It will give me the results of that student, and it will show the exam I, question I answered, and I got all the rest wrong because I didn't answer them. Okay? So I get a lot of information. If more than one student had taken it, all the students' names would be listed, and I would get all of their results. So it gives me some information. It doesn't give them a grade in the grade book, but it gives them that metacognitive piece of, did I understand the content or not? Now, let's say I wanted it to be a graded quiz, which most of the time I want them to be a graded quiz. This time, I would create it as a quiz or an assignment, either one. So let's say we're just going to make it as an assignment. And I'm going to add an assignment, and I'm going to call this a policy. I don't know. We'll name it something. Uh, policy, oops, sorry, policy video quiz. And this time when I put it in, I'm going to go to the same place, and I, I could just put the video in this way. It will not be automatically graded if I put it in this way. Now, why is that? Well, in order for it to communicate with my gradebook, I have to add it as an external tool. So to do that, I click External Tool. Normally, when it opens, it'll open up whatever the last thing was. If the last thing was no submission, it would default to that. But you're going to choose External Tool by Submission Type, and then you're going to click Find. And to find it, you just scroll down until you see Studio. And there's Studio. I'm going to click on Studio. It automatically goes to my uploads. I'm going to scroll down to the video with the quiz in it that I want, which was academic standing, this one. I'm going to say select this, and I'm going to say video quiz embed. And then I would choose the video, the quiz that I wanted, which is this one. And then I'm going to say embed. And the last step, and you must do this, is click select studio. So once I've clicked select, it selects studio. I can go in here and I can put information. I'll say, um, please watch the video and complete the embedded quiz. You can do, put whatever you want to in there. And when you save it, I've got this external tool with that video and click save. Now when I go to that, I now have this quiz in here and I'm ready to take the quiz. So. This one would actually go to the gradebook. If I publish it, well, I'll show you the gradebook. It's not published, so as a faculty member, I can see that, but as a student, I wouldn't see it in my gradebook. As soon as it's published, it would be for students to see in their grades, too. But as it's unpublished, we'll scroll and I'll see it. So we scroll over. Let's see what we call it. Policy quiz or something.
what did I name that? Policy video, here it is. So this is where it would be populated in the grade book. There would be marks here, and there would be a score for the test student if I had published it, but I haven't published it. Are there any questions? Right now, there's no questions in the chat. Um, Sharon, do you want me to unmute you? Me. Oh, you're unmuted now, Sharon. Okay, okay. So I'm trying to conceptualize this, how I do things. I um, normally, I do in certain courses, I lock the module, lockstep the modules, or you have to complete one, then the other piece opens. And I've been putting in just a little question that says, um, test your learning or um yeah test your learning and mm -hmm. uh, I put one question and if they answer that it opens up the next piece of the module and I'm mm -hmm. thinking can I do this in the same way so um you must do things in sequential order so now you've got to view the video and do the quiz before the next video or content area opens up. Would that work the same way? I believe so. I believe you could write that as a rule. They must complete. As a rule. Thank you. That's it. Yes, you would just create the rule to say that they have to complete that video quiz. Okay, so it would come up as a video quiz and not just because right now it's there's that rule is not there just as view. So when I put the video there, you have to view the video before you can go to the the, right. the when they view the video, the quiz is embedded in the video, and okay, so for the grade to go into their grade book, it has to be completed. Okay, and so it would say submit, and when you submit, it's exactly. not submitting the video. Okay. That was a classic. You saw that menu, submit incompleted quiz, because I hadn't completed it, or mm -hmm. go back and complete the quiz. I had two mm -hmm. options, so right. I chose okay. just for the sake of this demonstration mm -hmm. to just submit an incompleted quiz. But okay. I wanted to show you, um, this is a real course that's actually live, and it's this semester. Right. So be really cognizant of FERPA and try not to show student information, but I want you to see um, what the results are in a bigger group. So mm -hmm. here is a quiz that students took last week. It was just mm -hmm. a syllabus review. Every mm -hmm. student, I wanted to have 100, but I just wanted to make sure they went through the syllabus. Mm -hmm. So when I click on quiz results, I have this item analysis, which didn't show you much. Um, because the report wasn't ready, but if I scroll down, now each question has a response rate and how many mm -hmm. points were earned uh, for the for the question. And you can see this one, somebody actually missed something here, um, a bigger point m miss than all the other categories. So this question, even though it's 86%, which is really high, it was the question that was most missed on the test, and which is just information that I might take into account and do something with. Okay. So that is the quiz results, and it's under item analysis. I next could do student results, and I'm going to pull that up so you can see that I, how it scrolls, but um, I'm not going to do that. I'll show you a screenshot. Just I'm trying to be very cognizant of uh, FERPA. So I'm going to go back to my slide. You should now see my slide. Over here where I wrote FERPA, I took a screenshot and I marked out the student information. I could have scrolled way down through this and seen every student, oops, sorry about that, and seen every student who took it. This student made 83%. If I had clicked on attempt one, it would take me to the quiz and show me every question the student got answered and how they answered it for each attempt. This student took the test twice, watched the video twice, uh, the first time it took him eight minutes, and the second time it only took him 12, 14 to go from the beginning to end because they were had a high confidence level for some of the questions, obviously, but they had still went through it twice. Um, and after watching it twice, they got 100%. So again, it's more about um, you know that metacognitive piece, but it also gives you that time spent on the video, which I think is really kind of nice to be able to see. Oh, they spent this student spent 33 minutes on my video. Um, this student spent 20 minutes. Now, it doesn't mean that they watched it that long, but it does mean that they went in and read the question, thought about it, and maybe went back and forth on the questions. If I actually looked at the attempt, I would be able to see how many times they answered the question. So it's, it gives you a lot of information about um, what the student did and how they engaged with your piece of content that you've created. Thank um, you. So there's a couple of other questions in the chat um, okay. as we're kind of finishing up. 
So um, I'm just going to list them all so you kind of know how to pace yourself. Um, okay. So someone asked how to add closed captioning. Um, and then after that, how do I require this video and quiz before they are allowed to go to the next module? Mm -hmm. And then um, someone asked, how does it know how many points per question? And then um, uh, Monty just recently, based on your last comment, said, so they have, they can have an unlimited number of attempts no matter what. And again, I, I can, they're in the chat and I can go back to them too in a second. Okay. Um, I'm going to start with the first one. So closed captioning. Um, let me go backwards. Hold on a second. Um, so I can get to a real core, I mean, a real, some content. So I'm going to go back into um, my um, studio here. And these are videos that I have in this, just for this course. But if I go to my uploads, see, I have different videos in this course than I had in my um, other course. So this screen looks different because my students created actually videos for discussion and so these are their videos a lot of them are their videos some of them are mine but a lot of them are their videos but i'm going to go here um let's see if i've got one that i can give an example for that doesn't have i think everything i have has closed captioning but if i go here on this page and i click over here on closed captioning this already has captions but if it didn't i can tell it has caption because it has english as an option so if i click english i know i've already put the captions in if i hit the play button Hold on a second, let me get to that. You'll see the captions come up as soon as talking starts. I'm sorry, I'm trying to be fast. There's the caption and it appears at the top of the screen. If I didn't have captions, I could go down here underneath the video and choose the word captions. I, if I already had the captions in a format that was readable, I could choose upload, but I, if I didn't, I could use these three dots over here and I could um, have it create captions for me. Because the captions are already here, all I can do is edit them. If I click edit, it pulls up all the captions I already have and I can follow through and I can read through and see all the comments and I can make edits on my captions. But I could add the captions here if I didn't have them. Let me see if I can find a video if I go to, I'm sure if I go to my uploads, there'll be some videos that don't have captions. Um, without pulling up student work. Um, let's try this junk video. <laughs> I like the name of it. So I'm going to click junk and then I'm going to click on captions and there's no captions for this media. So that's perfect. I want to add captions. I simply click on captions and which language is spoken. I'm going to choose English and then I'm going to request it. Now Studio is going to go in and auto generate captions. It won't take very long because this is only a minute and 43 seconds. Um, but it will generate the captions. I'll be able to go in and edit the captions, and then I can save and upload those captions. So that's how you do captions. That was one question. Um, how do you add points? When you create the quiz, you can go in and edit and put in the point value you want for the quiz, but when you create it under the assignment module, you'll tell it how many points it's worth. So if, if you say 100 points, then it will automatically assign the point value to put it on 100 points. And point value, what was the third thing? Unlimited number of attempts. Yes, they have unlimited number of attempts. If you don't want to grade but one, you tell your students, I'm only going to grade your first attempt. But I don't really understand why you would do that because um, it's really about the learning. This, this tool is more about engagement and learning. Now, if you, if you want to do that, you can say, I'm only going to grade your first attempt. And that's what's graded and goes in your grade book and you can delete the lower grade. Um, but you know that they can go back and review, that's an automatic part of this because it is about the learning. They can go back and review the content and re-answer the question. So either way, a number of attempts are answering the question. I said this has to be a low stakes test, so you, can, you can't limit how many attempts they make. Um, and then, oh, I was gonna show you back to review and publish, these are the captions. So now I've got all the captions for this one. If I thought they were great, I'd go ahead and click publish, or if I needed to edit them, I'd hit edit, but I'm just gonna say publish. So now if I refresh this view on this screen by clicking here and refreshing, now when I hit this closed caption button, well, it took me all the way back to the videos. Which video was that? Does anybody remember? Um, my uploads, maybe I'll remember when I get here. 
uh, analytic, this one. Uh, now when I go to this video and click this video and I hit closed caption, English is available. So now the captions are already there. If I hit play, let me fast forward this a little bit before I hit play, um, there are my captions and they weren't there before. Okay. Any so other last, questions? Did I answer them all? I think the last one um, is how do I require this video and quiz before they are allowed to go to the next module? Okay, we talked about that. When you go in and set your rules in your modules, it just is, you'll have to set the rule for watching this video, viewing this video. It will automatically, once they've completed the video and submitted the quiz, it will take them to the next module. Okay, so are there any other questions? For April. Great, so um, as you all are about to leave before you um, completely leave, um, this is a part of the online learning innovation webinar series, which all the webinars are listed on this page. Um, the next one coming up is next week, Monday, January 27th, about open pedagogy and open education at UNCG. Um, this is a part of a series of that we are handing out those OER mini grants again, where we give you $1,000 if you're willing to cut down costs in your course. Um, you get to work with your ITCs, you get to work with your librarian, and you get money. So it's great. So that webinar is a part of that series. We're also doing a panel of past OER winners on Thursday. We're offering workshops next week. Uh, so let me know if you're interested in any of that. Um, the webinar is listed on here. Uh, the other ones coming up this semester are by are on creating self-scoring assessment using Qualtrics by Rob Owens, another ITC from the Bryan School. And um, also in March is one on JSTOR tools for text analysis projects, if you're doing any text analysis. Um, we also have a series on research and application. Uh, so the next one coming up is on the new PubMed. If any of y'all use PubMed, they've changed inter uh, interfaces. We also have one coming up on managing archival research photographs with Tropy. Uh, if you do any archival work, we're having one on the census, census 101, and also APA 7, if any of y'all use APA 7. Uh, so uh, there, you can sign up for those as well. They're all around 30 minutes. We record them. We provide the closed captioning. We do all the work for you. Um, so please let me know if you have any questions. Uh, thank you, April. And, thank you, and I, um, thank you guys for coming. I hope it was helpful. I mean, yeah, I learned a lot. Okay. I did too. Good. Thank you. Thank Very you. Welcome. Have a great I'll day. See you all soon. Bye. Bye. Thanks.